Do you struggle with manifesting your desires or your dreams? Or you find yourself constantly in this cycle or loop of disbelief around your desires or dreams, like I talked about in the video yesterday? If so, that this video is going to share with you seven ways that your ego is blocking your creativity and your dreams from manifesting and the number one way that you can use to get out of it. Hello, 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 Mosaic Souls. Hello, Mosaic Souls. My name is Rachel Alexander, artist and Mosaic Soul mentor, and welcome to Divine Earth School, the place where we talk all about spirituality, health, and wellness, and we align our divinities to our higher selves. So let's dive into these seven ways that your ego is actually blocking your creativity. I wanted to share these insights and lessons because I found that in my own life, I've done this and I've overcome this. And I, your life just becomes a lot, a lot easier when you remove these blocks that are happening within your own psyche and habitual patterns. So the first way that your ego, or just if you don't resonate with the word ego, that your condition patterns are blocking your creativity and blocking you from manifesting your dreams is arguing for your limitation. Do you ever find that you have a dream or desire or maybe someone even is divinely sent to you and you're talking about your dreams or desires, but you have a tendency to argue for your limitation. You say, well, that's not possible. Not in this economy. This economy, there's just no way that I can pursue being an X, Y, and Z, fill in the blank, right? Or I don't, you know, I've just had so many crappy relationships in my past. There's just no good men out there. There are no good women out there. Everybody just sucks, right? Like, do you find yourself arguing for your limitation? That's a sign of your ego that's a sign of your ego blocking your creativity and manifestation. The second way is unwilling to be open to new ideas or possibilities, having a fixed mindset, right? So same situation where you're arguing for your limitation paired with that is that you're not open to possibilities that maybe there are, there is that one good person that you've been waiting to meet. Maybe you can, you know, pursue being a writer. Maybe you can pursue your dream of, you know, fill in the blank in this quote unquote crappy economy, but because you're not willing to see infinite possibilities that are always at play, you're arguing for your limitation and you're unwilling to even be open to them. So vibrationally, you can't be a match to your desire or you can't be a match to creative ideas flowing because you're not even allowing any new idea or new possibility to be become uh, vibrationally resonant in your experience. You see what I'm saying? And the third way is needing to needing to know the outcome before you've even started wanting tangible proof right so this goes in al along with the first two right where maybe you're arguing for your limitation or maybe you find that you are might be moving a little bit towards creating your desired lifestyle or creating something creative in your creative experience or creating something that you want allowing things to a little bit flow but then you find that you get stuck or stagnant because you are so fearful that maybe you don't even start because you're so fearful because you don't know the outcome right you assume either you assume the worst or you are so fearful because you don't see tangible proof yet that you stop yourself from even allowing yourself to vibrationally be in the vicinity of what you want right so you know needing to have the outcome be you know see it right there and then and there can really hinder you from creating what you want right and i can share with you examples of something that i used to do all the time <laughs> and i did for a long time and i only recently um within the past year and a half have like released that pattern and this is very much so close to this third way which is needing to know the outcome i would always get divine downloads of like creative ideas or creative um inspirations right even this video actually idea is a creative inspiration but now i actually take action when i get creative ideas because it just feels juicy and fun right so but what i would do is i would feel the juiciness and funness but i would stop and i wouldn't even let myself move forward because i was like well what's the outcome how am i going to make money from this or i don't see how this is going to help me get x y and z so i wouldn't even allow myself to move forward because i didn't have any tangible proof of what it is I truly desired, right? So I would stop. And this is kind of going into um, the the fourth one, 
which is if creative ideas, which is basically the same thing of what I just mentioned, is if creative ideas do flow, you're stopping yourself from taking inspired action because you're too afraid of what will or will not happen. So this is basically me explaining what I just talked about, what I used to do all the time. So you might be getting creative ideas. You might be getting that divine downloads, like I like to call them, or divine inspirations or inspired ideas, but you're not even moving forward with that inspired action because you're afraid. You don't know what will or won't happen. And so you don't even follow through on the inspired action. You feel the excitement bubbling up. You feel that passion and that joy of the idea, but your mind, your ego, or needs to have the outcome laid out one, two, three, step by step. And you're not even just taking that initial step of moving towards your goal. So that's another sign, sign number four, that you're blocking your creativity, right? Um, the fifth sign is you're not having, you're not even allowing any space or having any spaciousness for creative ideas to flow, right? So maybe you're stuck in that pattern or that loop or that flow of where you're just always constantly you know, life is so hard or whatever, fill in the blank. Like I never get what I want and why can't I manifest what I desire? Why does this person seem to have life easy and my life is so hard? Whatever, all the excuses that the mind has a tendency to loop over and over to continuously create unwanted experiences in our lives, right? So you don't even allow for spaciousness for you to, for you to even daydream, for you to even think about new possibilities, right? So you've shut it off. From the get-go so even maybe you maybe you're stuck in this cycle of wanting more but you're not even allowing yourself to visualize the more part right what do you actually want right like you're like you're stagnant and you're stuck and you're just stuck in this rut of like oh my life sucks right you, you you've probably met those people hopefully you're not one of those people if you are kind of recognize yourself in the mirror but just kind of see this where those people who are always complaining about life complaining that life sucks and, blah, 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 and they have no no plans of changing, no, no intentions or, you know, um, any impetus within themselves to actually make a change in their lives. They're just so stuck in the loop of complaining over and over and over or complacency, but they don't have any intentions of changing their, changing their lives. That's kind of another way. The fifth way of knowing that you're blocking your ego is blocking your creativity, blocking divine manifestations, right? Where you're feeling that discomfort, but you're not even allowing for creative or new ideas to flow, right? And then the sixth way is repeating old patterns that no longer serve you or keep you stuck or make you miserable, right? So maybe you find that you always you want to lose weight or whatever, but you just keep finding yourself, um, you know, making excuses. Well, you know, my mom is overweight and it's just kind of runs in the family or I have diabetes and it's just this is something I just going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. And so you keep telling yourself these same old patterns, not willing to change, not willing to release whatever inner baggage is going on to release the weight right um physically mentally or emotionally um, that's just one example or just repeating sort of like generational patterns right like um you know patterns of like maybe abuse or not thinking that you deserve better like being in an abusive relationship well you know this is just what you do you stick with your your man or you stick with your woman even if they're mentally or emotionally abusing you and not feeling like you can have something better for yourself right so you repeat that cycle because your mom and you know your aunties did it so this is what you're here to do right like you repeat those same loops over and over or you know uh, one of the things i've noticed in a lot of the black community black people like you know well I'm black, so I have to work extra hard in the society and I have to work extra hard just to get ahead and all these kind of stories and stuff we tell ourselves and because they've been passed down over and over. And so they recreate these situations where they're uh, constantly, not to negate their experience, every experience is valid, but they keep recreating these experiences where they are constantly being um, uh, racially profiled or not chosen for jobs because of the color of their skin and stuff like that, re-manifesting these old things and over and over and over because they keep telling the same story. Oh, because I'm black, life is hard, right? So that's another loop that I've noticed and seen over and over and over again. So, you know, just repeating old patterns that no longer serve you, right? Like keeping you stuck or keeping your life miserable. That's just sign number six that your ego is blocking you. Whatever way and form so just kind of notice any patterns in your life where maybe something keeps looping over and over. Maybe you continuously have money troubles or you continuously have relationship troubles or you have continuously have health troubles or you continuously fill in the blank, right? Those looping things, it's usually because some belief system is operating or some pattern 
has been passed down or something has been going on that keeps looping over and over and over that you're not willing to release or you're not willing to look at. And once you are willing to look at it and uncover and unpack some of these limiting beliefs that surround this life event that happens over and over, then you'll start to see your life start to move and take shape and move into more of what you desire, right? And then the seventh pattern or seventh way that your ego is blocking you is that you're not trusting your inner guidance. So your inner guidance can show up in many ways, but some of the ways are curiosity, just that innate curiosity or excitement or passion or having insights or inspired ideas or just that inner knowing when you receive it. So you're not trusting the inner guidance when you receive it. So when you have these divine downloads, like I like to call them, when you and you don't do anything with them, you don't write them down or you don't take action on them, not to say that you won't receive them. Our higher selves are always sending us stuff over and over, whether it be through divine ideas or it might be a reflection of somebody saying something to us being like, oh, I remember feeling that way and like, oh yeah, that's confirmation. But we don't even take the confirmation sometimes. And so we stay in those cycles or those repeated patterns and loops, right? So those are ways, the seven ways that we block our creativity and our divine ability to manifest what we desire, our dream lives and our dreams. And so I just wanted to share them. Let's do a recap and then I'm gonna share with you the number one way that you can move into overcoming all of that, right? And so the number uh, number one out of the seven ways is arguing for your limitation. Number two is unwilling to be open to new ideas or possibilities, having a fixed mindset. Um, number three is needing to know the outcome before you've even started or wanting tangible proof. Number uh, that's number three, right? Um, number four is if creative ideas are flowing, you're stopping yourself from taking inspired action because you're too afraid of what will or won't happen. Number five is not creating enough space within yourself to even have creative ideas to flow to you. Um, number six is repeating old patterns that no longer serve you, keeping you stuck or make you miserable. And number seven is not trusting your inner guidance um, when you receive it, right? So those are the seven patterns that are, those are seven patterns. We probably, our ego has innumerable ways of <laughs> blocking our higher selves from flowing into our lives. But I just wanted to share seven common ones that I see over and over in um, my clients' lives and my own life that I've overcome and am still working through. I'm not perfect at this, but you know, we're always growing and expanding. And I just wanted to share this because it was divinely inspired. And so let's talk about the number one way that you can overcome these blocks. And that really is simply to tune into your intuition, right? It kind of goes to the number seventh one. When you start to in like awaken into your intuition and cultivate and trust your intuition, right? And how do you do that, right? Awaken, trust, cultivate your intuition. You start doing that by receiving the divine downloads, right? writing them down if you want to or taking your phone and recording them and just taking mental note of when you receive these divine inspirations or messages right and then taking them one further step and actually taking action on these divine inspiration right so you can't just have things stop at the mental and emotional level which is beautiful like but sometimes that energy is moving you into action, right? So even like this video, for example, is in divinely inspired. This is a divine download. I was reading a book and I was like, ooh, this would be a good topic. And the topic just hit my mind and I just wrote it down in my journal. And I was like, ooh, seven topics. And I just, they just flowed right out, <laughs> right? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to share this with my audience. This is prime example of taking divine inspired action, right? In your own life, right? But it might show up differently. My, you might get inspired. Oh, I should make that phone call to the thing make the phone call or put it in your journal and um, your calendar to put to, to do right to start moving towards creating your divine life by following those divine inspirations those inklings those curiosities doing research like oh you know I've been really wanting to da, 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 do some research on it find follow your in, your curiosity we live in the inf information age you can literally have information at the tip of your fingers and type in how to xyz on your phone or what does blah, blah, blah mean, right? Like we literally live in it. So we really don't have any excuses. So the number one way that you can get out of this is cultivate, awaken, and move into trusting your intuition and following through with the inspired action that you receive. So let me know in the comments below which of these you find that you might be stuck in. If you've ever experienced this in your own life, let me know in the comments below. And 
also list maybe an inspired action that you might feel inspired to take as well after that pattern that you've noticed in your own life. I would love to hear in the comments below. And as always, flow with what feels good and let go of what doesn't because you are divine. You are a divine being and your soul knows exactly what you've come to traverse on this planet and journey through on this planet. So remember, what you conceive is what you'll receive. What you expect is what you'll get. And however you feel is what will become real for you. So vibrate higher and I will chat with you guys next time. Peace, love, and light.